I call the, uh, the cemetery my son's new home. This is my angel's new home. I talked to him, but he's not able to answer me. I know his body is there and I don't want to accept it, but at the end, you know, I got to put it in my mind, like he's gone. Hello, Angel. Sorry, I came this late. I went through through the pain that right now a lot of mothers are going through, you know, and it, it, it make me angry because every time I hear, oh, a teenager got killed, bring me back memories. I go back to the nightmare that I have about my son. Stockton homicides are on another record pace. Gangs and drugs continue to flourish. Homicide up 100%. Gang violence is exploding in Stockton. They're getting worse now. It's just people carrying guns just to protect themselves. People carrying guns just to act hard. The uh, victim is approximately 15 to 16 years old. Death appears to be a result of a, a gunshot wound to the head. It has to stop because an innocent victim was taken. Our brother was taken, had done no one any harm. Stockton has a long history of bloodshed. More than 500 people have been killed in the city in the past decade, and at least a thousand more have been wounded by gunfire. It's a cycle of violence that has broken families, left neighborhoods in fear, and forced city leaders to scramble to find solutions before the next body drops. And it's not something that you can arrest away. It has to be treated. I mean, just like uh, having an infectious disease, you can't just quarantine everybody. You have to do something to stop the disease. In 2018, things seemed to be getting better. Stockton saw a 40% decrease in homicides from the previous year. But the progress made was short-lived. A dramatic spike in shootings in the spring of 2019 left more than two dozen dead, forcing Stockton police to redeploy their officers to three areas of the city the department had deemed hot zones. They called the redeployment Operation RVN, pronounced RAVEN, which stands for Reducing Violence in Our Neighborhoods. What Operation Raven is about is putting high visible police personnel, black and white police cars, into these communities that are experiencing the most gun violence. It's about suppressing violent crime in the area through that high visible police presence, but it's also to give a sense of safety and security to the, the uh, neighborhood residents. A couple was over here. One, two, one kind of grazed right there at the top. Mostly this window, you can see it kind of fell down now because the bullet holes. Latina Griffin lives in one of the city's hot zones. In May, police said a group of people shot up her home while she and her family were asleep inside. One of the bullets pierced the front door and hit her 12-year-old son, JJ, in the arm. It's right here. It went through there, ricocheted off my bone and went lower. JJ was one of 63 people who survived a gunshot wound in Stockton in the first five months of 2019. Doctors and researchers say a gunshot victim's survival often depends on where the person was struck. For JJ, who was asleep when he was hit, that meant a difference between lying on his back or on his side. If he would have been sleeping normal and not well, he probably would have got hit in his head. That plays over and over, but I'll just be like, hey, God had him covered, and he has angels camped around him, so that's what probably saved his life that night. Do you have a today? Yes. Who's J JC on? Did I say that right? JC on, okay. I'll get you all marked up, and then we'll call you back and see you. Are you mom? Yes. Okay, wonderful. I try to ask him, about how he's feeling, but he just be like, I'm fine. Oh, can I touch this? But mentally, he's probably not fine, but he's going kids are going to say that they're fine, even though they're not. In a way, JJ was lucky. He survived the physical trauma. But experts say survivors of gunshot wounds report significant long-term declines in physical and or mental health, including symptoms of post-traumatic stress and avoidance behaviors. For this reason, people like Brian Muhammad have chosen to treat gun violence in Stockton as a disease. 
we understand how uh, violence spreads and how people can be affected by it and how that may lead to the next murder, the next homicide, and we try to get in front of that. Brian runs the Stockton branch of Advance Peace, a program founded in Richmond which works to stem gun violence by targeting people most likely to find themselves on either side of a firearm. We deal with the 1%, that 1% that are most likely to shoot or get shot, and uh, we go directly at them, the one that has slipped through the system and has not been uh, getting any services uh, that most people would deem to be unserviceable. Once Brian's team has identified candidates for the program, who usually are young men with criminal records and have a propensity for violence, Advanced Peace mentors help them build a life plan. So I ask him, what, what tools do you need? I need how to get there, how, housing, how to get a job, how to make a resume, how to speak with the person on the phone. It's hard, but they don't know. After about eight to ten months, successful candidates are eligible to receive a monthly stipend, which critics of the program have called cash for criminals, essentially paying would-be shooters not to shoot. I think a lot of that is rooted in just uh, basic racism, and to paint it as cash for criminals is something that a right-wing agenda might be trying to uh, attach to a program that's been allotted for black and brown uh, folks, I think I think that's the driving factor. The Stockton branch of the program is fairly new, so it's too early to gauge its success. Brian's team is still working to gain trust in the city's embattled neighborhoods and identify potential candidates. But in Richmond, where the program started, Advanced Peace leaders say their efforts led to a 66% reduction in firearm assaults, causing injury or death between 2010 and 2017. The, the challenges that Stockton's face is not like, not too much different than many other cities in America, and that the, the challenges are rooted primarily in issues of poverty and uh, lack of educational opportunities, uh, which kind of leads to the, some of the despair that we're seeing. Data compiled from the California Department of Education shows Stockton Unified School District had the lowest graduation rate in San Joaquin County during the 2017-2018 school year. Only 75% of Stockton's high school students graduated with a diploma. Many of those who didn't graduate either dropped out or are redoing their senior year. So here you got young people, jobless, homeless, hopeless, but they got a gun. What do you think is going to happen? As they say, how do you stay clean in a mud puddle? Sammy Nunez is the founder of Fathers and Families of San Joaquin, a nonprofit focused on supporting vulnerable families in Stockton. In 2016, the NGO opened one of only 12 trauma recovery centers in California with the goal of disrupting retaliatory violence and addressing community trauma. The most important question right now is how do we save people's lives? We've had to bury too many children in this community. That's blood on our hands as a society. What does that do to a, to a land, to an environment, to a city, to a people when you're burying your babies? That's who we're burying right now. I have to wake up every morning, go to work, and pretend that I'm okay. But I'm not okay. Since that day, it's like I feel like me is not me anymore. Because they took a part of me. Nancy Medina buried her 16-year-old son, Angel, last year. Detectives say he'd been shot in the back during a robbery by a young man he'd met doing time in juvenile detention. He was always going to be my, my child, my baby, but for him it was like, no, mom, I'm not a kid no more, I'm not a baby, I'm already, he say, I'm a grown-up man. As Angel got older, Nancy says he started smoking, getting into fights, and messing around with guns. It's not the boy she raised him to be, but being a single mother, she says it was hard to always keep an eye on him. In the months leading up to his murder, the two only kept in touch by phone. Angel had run away from a school he was enrolled in for at-risk youth. Nancy didn't know where he'd gone. The day he was killed, he came by the house while Nancy was at a birthday party and took her car. Later that afternoon, Angel met up with a guy he knew from Juvenile Hall to sell him marijuana. During the deal, the young man pulled a gun on Angel and shot him in the back as he was sitting in the front seat of Nancy's car. 
the same one she drives today. He was sitting in, in this spot where I'm sitting right now when this person shot him from behind. And it brings me bad memories, but at the same time, it's good memories because this is the last place where my son spent his last hour, his last day. 20-year-old Ronnie Dewan Coleman was arrested five months later and charged with Angel's murder. He's being held without bail in the San Joaquin County Jail while he awaits a preliminary hearing in August. I don't want my girls to, to be in this, in this mess, because this city, that's what it is for me, a mess. Because it's like, people are not afraid to take somebody's life, you know? To take somebody's life away. They, it seems like they don't care. They just go and shut up people and they don't care. And I don't want, I don't want my girls to, to be in here no more. I don't feel safe. My girls don't feel safe either. We've created this, and now we need young people to trust us again as we collectively try to solve these persistent problems that have plagued us for far too long. The trust is critical. Uh, we cannot go into a community and make the real change we need to if we don't have certain levels of trust there. There are many people trying to rewrite Stockton's history of violence, and both law enforcement and community organizations agree they can't do it alone. But some people like Lottie Griffin can't afford to wait around to see how it all plays out. Personally, I was already planning to move from California, but this just made me want to leave even more because who wants their 12-year-old to be hit by a bullet or better yet, even killed? Luckily, it was only his arm and not nowhere else, so that was a blessing, but it's just time to go.